You know what time it is. Apex Legends Season 21 dropped, and with it came massive changes to the meta, including a brand new legend. And after spending some time grinding out every character on the roster, I'm back with another tier list for you guys. I usually try to spare people's feelings when I do these tier lists, but it's starting to feel inauthentic, and trying to please everyone is exhausting. So this time I'm just going to speak my truth, and as always I'll preface by saying my tier list is entirely subjective, and I'm not trying to offend anyone by not placing your main in S tier. And while I'm considering each legend's utility and ranked, this is not an Apex competitive tier list. Also if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing because it really helps out the channel. All that being said, let's get into it. Not pulling any punches, starting off D tier, I have Seer. It's season 21, and if you're still playing or maining Seer, I don't know what to tell you. Can he be effective? Yes. But at this point, he doesn't even feel close to the same, and in my opinion, one of his biggest drawbacks is that he just isn't fun to play either. Plus, he's very easily countered. His tactical ability can be evaded, and his ultimate ability doesn't reveal enemies that are stationary or crouching, and can also be destroyed. Overall, there are other options on the roster that can do what he does but better, and you'd be better off running a different legend this season. Next up, we have Mirage. While on the surface it seems like he provides a lot of great team utility being in the support class, causing chaos in team fights and through invisa reses, his kit is beginning to feel more and more like fool's gold to me. I swear I'm not a hater, I'm just trying to be honest. And I will acknowledge that I have been bamboozled quite a few times to start this season, so I'm not going to use the same tired rationale that experienced players are able to tell the real Mirage apart from his decoys without fail. He's definitely at his strongest when in isolated 1v1 scenarios within the chaos of a team fight. But I have noticed that certain legend abilities immediately hard counter Mirage. Ash's Arc Snare, Caustic's Nox Vision, Vantage's Spotter's Lens, and now Alter's Void Vision perk to name a few. Sadly he just isn't a competitive pick as it currently stands. Moving on we have Ballistic. Low key I wanted to hit you guys with a hot take but my better judgement prevailed. Though I will say it's starting to feel like low hanging fruit oftentimes just continuously punching down on non meta legends just because it's the quote unquote accepted take or because every other creator or pro player does so. Like had I put him at the bottom of D tier very few would have thought twice or objected to that ranking is my point. Regardless Ballistic is pretty good in my opinion and I actually continue to consistently frag whenever I play him. He received a couple small buffs with the new season, the damage from a planted smart bullet was increased from 5 to 10 and his care package insight perk option was removed and replaced with slingshot which improves Ballistic's base sling weapon to blue then purple as you level up your evo shield. Being able to utilize your sling weapon viably throughout the match definitely ups his versatility and food for thought his ultimate ability is like beast of the hunt for your entire squad. I'm just saying, real Apex hipsters play Ballistic. Closing out D tier, I have Octane. He received a couple tweaks to his upgrade tree this season where you have the option to double down on either his tactical or ultimate ability. I think that's a positive tweak, but it doesn't really move the needle for where he falls in the meta. More often than not, he's terrible. But like I've always said, he's difficult to rank fairly because of the vast disparity between skilled and unskilled players. His kit is pretty simple and approachable for newer players, but also provides the best players enough tools to succeed in higher elo lobbies. Basically, you're going to have to look in the mirror and self-evaluate. Does your playstyle and overall skill warrant playing Octane, and will your impact offset not picking a character with more useful abilities? Obviously, this doesn't apply to just having fun in pubs or mixtape, but you feel me. Moving on to Legends I have ranked in C tier, to start it off, I have Fuse. I think at this point I'm notorious for sometimes ranking Fuse lower than he deserves, and maybe that's the case as well this season. He also received a couple tweaks to his upgrade tree, and now has the option to scan ring consoles. A little odd, but kind of cool that it's an option I guess. But let's be honest, if you're running Fuse, are you really picking scanning ring consoles over no slow effects from crossing the mother load? In fairness, Fuse can be very useful in certain situations especially when griefing teams and farming damage. But he has his limitations with limited potential for skill expression compared to other legends. And personally, I would probably pick Ballistic over him. Say what you want, but are we playing a shooting game or an abilities game? I'm taking gun skill over nade spamming and stat padding. Next up in C tier, we have Vantage. While this qualifies as a drop in my legend rankings compared to last season, I still think she's criminally slept on, and I'm willing to die on that hill. Unfortunately, the community as a whole seems to really be aligned on hating on Vantage, and I'm not sure if that's because she's annoying, or because people that play her tend to adopt an annoying playstyle. Let me know in the comments why you think that is, or why you hate Vantage. But at this point, I'm gonna call it what it is. Unfair. Like Fuse, she has the option to scan ring consoles as well as being a recon class legend. I've also noticed that she's often knocked for her Echo Relocation Tactical ability, whereas Revenant, Loba, and Pathfinder are often praised for their cues that are very similar. While she is definitely flawed, my new theory and recommendation is that if you're a newer player, don't play Vantage. Moving on, we have Valkyrie. I feel like I'm staring down the barrel of YouTube hate comments and palpable copium, but let's continue keeping it a buck. Who's playing Valk in Season 21? In my opinion, she continues to rest on the laurels of being a must-pick legend once upon a time, and while I don't think she's bad, I just don't think the community is evaluating her using the same rubric, if that makes sense. 
the addition of evac towers have really hurt her, and along with that I believe that most players have developed the skill of tracking upwards to secure knocks. So even her ultimate ability isn't a get out of jail free card like it used to be. Thank god. Having a jetpack is pretty cool and gives you very unique movement potential for sure, but the overall utility just isn't there and has Valk falling a little short compared to other picks this season. The next legend I have ranked in C tier is Ash. She's fallen in my rankings a bit, but I still feel like she's underrated with a lot of her utility being intangible. She's just been in a weird spot for what feels like forever now. Though she did receive a small but major buff this season, her arc snare is now a one-handed ability. Honestly, huge, and it's about damn time. With the perk system dropping last season and Ash benefiting from it, along with the buff she received this season, we're slowly but surely moving in the right direction. But with the introduction of Alter, who was another portal legend, Ash is progressively feeling more and more outclassed. Shout out all my Ash mains, I empathize. It feels like we'll gladly accept anything at this point. Still though, she's not bad, and possesses a unique playstyle and impact when played correctly. It's just frustrating because it seems like there's so much potential here, with her kit possessing some Assault, Recon, and Skirmisher class flavors, but it's giving... Master of None vibes. Moving on, in the closeout C tier, I have Crypto. His upgrade tree this season was reworked and is much better. Network traffic which calls out squads in the area when deploying his drone is now just a part of his base kit. There's a new level 2 option called Quick Ping which improves drone handling, and two new level 3 options. Hackathon which doubles his drone recharge rate and grants a speed boost when it explodes, everybody has double time now, and satellite imagery where his drone scan lasts an additional second and a half. Overall a W and much more unique than the generic tactical or ultimate cooldown reduction. While many creators and pros are quick to write him off, I honestly believe that in the right hands he can be as high as A or even S tier. But as it stands, he's the most difficult legend to play and master, performing the best as part of a pre-made squad with a coordinated attack and macro strategy, with most situations across general apex play not favoring his strengths or requisite pace of play for him to truly excel. Moving on to the legends I have ranked in B tier this season, starting with Loba. Luke Goblin's Lament. She is still viable and this may qualify as a hot take, but I feel that with a less than inspiring upgrade tree, the rise of Conduit, and the support class in general becoming much sturdier, I had a dropper in my rankings this season. Her claim to fame since the introduction of the class system was that she was the best legend for solo queuing ranked, the only support class legend with mobility, and access to essential and timely loot. That's not necessarily true anymore in my opinion, and she's feeling the effects of power creep where the field is improved, but she's pretty much the same. Still though, Loba can be effective when played as a means to an end, less time looting to take more fights, holding more nades in your inventory because there's always access to more ammo in the area, and more often than not, always being able to run your preferred loadout. A competitive advantage is a competitive advantage, and those are definitely competitive advantages, but keep in mind that her utility decreases as you get into the late stages of a match. Up next we have Newcastle. He received a few buffs with the new season, the throw animation on his mobile shield is now 2.5 times faster, and his castle wall ultimate ability will serve as a pseudo Watson gen for as long as the wall is energized. Time will tell if these changes serve to elevate him in the meta, but for now he falls in B tier for me. I've always been high on Newcastle and I still feel that he possesses game-breaking potential with the ability to make a unique impact. What holds him back though is having an insanely high skill ceiling and being so difficult to play effectively. Plus, in an offense-oriented environment and with most people being unwilling to commit to mastering the anchor playstyle, I feel that Newcastle has become an afterthought and fallen to the wayside. That or the community is fat phobic. The next legend I have ranked in B tier this season is Rampart. With an awesome upgrade tree and overall just feeling a lot more agile and versatile offensively as a defensive legend, she's a pretty solid pick right now. And with the landscape of the meta being as fluid as it is right now, being able to produce cover at a moment's notice is at a premium, and is Rampart's bread and butter, obviously. Her amped covers allow her to excel at defending open space and provide her and her squad a trading advantage. She definitely has a high skill floor and ceiling with a pretty nuanced playstyle, and I think the challenge is that she has to be played so methodically. With how her kit is designed, it doesn't favor a reactive playstyle, and playing her is a bit like playing chess, with every move being intentional. Next up we have Wraith. Hey, this wouldn't be much of a tier list if I have 15 legends in A tier, let's keep it a buck. But real talk, Wraith has her obvious strengths and is great at what she does well. She loses a bit of viability on larger maps with open space like Broken Moon and Stormpoint, and I've found that her utility is largely self-beneficial, situational, or not consistently useful. Low-key I've been playing Wraith a lot more as of late, and I've noticed that I'll force the issue with my portals either trying to make a play or trying desperately to provide my team some sort of tangible utility. Obviously she has a skill gap with a high skill ceiling, especially with her portal, but the greatest asset and attribute she adds to competitive squads is simply staying alive amidst chaos and keeping the game going. A tip I'll leave you guys with though is to pick 6th sense for her level 2 upgrade. Actually insanely useful from my experience. Moving on, ah yes, perpetually B tier. The most balanced legend! Quite literally not worth playing when you could play Gibraltar instead. Bangalore. 
Listen, hey, I realize she was played by most squads in ALGS, but this isn't an Apex competitive tier list. And hey, look, you really think I want to be ranking her this low? Come on now. But real talk, she's still a sturdy and viable pick this season, but just a shell of herself after being decimated by nerfs. And with the removal of digital threats altogether, I feel the meta and pro meta is bound to shift. She's far less athletic and feels like a pro athlete coming back from an ACL just to tear her meniscus. Damn it! But she still can be effective and make an impact. There's just less room for error in my opinion, being that she's less forgiving in her current state. A tip I have for my fellow Bangalore mains is to run tactical cooldown reduction for her level 2 upgrade over ultimate cooldown reduction. Trust. I've also been favoring the Refuge level 3 perk which allows her to regenerate HP while inside smoke over auto peeing enemies who trigger double time. Also while we're on the subject, I guess every legend is getting some form of a double time perk now. Why not distribute a Wraith Q upgrade instead? Crypto enters the void when his drone is destroyed. Fuse enters the void on successful knuckle cluster hits. Like bruh. <sighs> Closing out B tier, I have Gibraltar. In my opinion, on paper, Gibby slightly outclasses Bang by every reasonable metric at this point. He's in the support class, which is more valuable than being the assault class, all things considered. He possesses an upgrade tree that's much more fun, and his ultimate cooldown is a minute and a half shorter, which is still crazy to me. So yeah, other than maybe Bangalore being more versatile and flexible, and dependent on playstyle, role, fit, function, etc., Gibby is slightly better right now in my opinion. He can be a little difficult to get used to with a larger hitbox to accommodate for, and usually immediately being slotted into an anchor role, but he's actually pretty fun once you get the hang of him. And with the change they made last season where Heavy Rig Legends now use me medium rig first person movement animations, he feels a lot more agile. Overall, he's a tank that's much more versatile now than in seasons past, possessing some offensive punch, making him a sleeper pick in season 21. Also quick pause, make sure to drop a like if you're enjoying the video so far. Moving on and starting off A tier, I have Catalyst. She was buffed and her legend upgrade tree was reworked, which immediately propels her back to being a borderline meta pick this season in my opinion. Long cast, which granted a 40% increase in spike throw range, is now integrated into her base tactical, with the base cooldown of her Q also being decreased by 5 seconds. Her base ultimate was increased by 5 meters, and they are also introducing a new upgrade option called Pharaoh Door, which fully rebuilds and reinforces missing doors with her passive ability. While she's not what she once was, she's back to being kind of insane as the most versatile controller class legend. She possesses obvious unique utility and is fun to play, catering to reactive playstyles more than other legends in her class. But why I don't have her ranked higher is due to the introduction of Alter, with her kit serving as a hard counter. Next up in A tier, we have Lifeline. I feel like she's bounced back in a big way the past couple seasons and especially since the legend upgrade system was introduced at the beginning of last season. Her tactical cooldown level 2 upgrade reduces the cooldown of her healing drone by 25 seconds, which is equivalent to its deployment duration. So this essentially means that if you choose this upgrade option, you'll always have Lifeline's health drone available, which is pretty insane. Her care package ult is much more useful now too and will provide essential and timely loot for you and your squad, offsetting the issue of it sometimes serving as a third party beacon. She's honestly just good right now, and a big part of why I felt like I had to drop Loba in my rankings this season. Just don't forget you're playing Lifeline. I'm Lifeline! Yes! Up next I have Pathfinder. It seems like he's not being played as much since they nerfed him getting an immediate ult charge off scanning care packages, but he remains one of the most popular legends by pick rate, so I don't know. What do I know? His high skill floor definitely serves as a barrier to entry that intimidates newer players, and from my experience as a novice pathy gamer, he's not necessarily a legend you can just pick up to make an immediate impact without prior reps. Regardless, he remains a strong pick despite a slight drop in my rankings this season. He is still the best team movement legend in the game and is able to fill in gaps in any team comp with what his kit and upgrade tree offer. You have the choice between scanning ring consoles or survey beacons, and really he is just a better version of legends like Octane or Valkyrie at this point. I set a goal for myself last season to hit a saucy grapple clip, but didn't follow through on it, so I'm carrying that goal over to this season. Please hold me accountable and remind me to play Pathy on future content. Moving on, we have Caustic. I don't know how many different ways I can say that he's good with every tier list I put out, but nothing's really changed regarding his effectiveness. He's still great and remains a force to be reckoned with in Season 21. I keep citing the introduction of Alter as something to monitor as the meta shakes out in the coming months because, on paper, her ability to breach seemingly counters controller class legends. Caustic is at his best when punishing reckless pushes or when catching opponents off guard, which is why I believe he will be the least affected by Alter. Picture taking Alter Q into a room where Caustic has his trap set up and the gas hits you, then you either have to get out the same way you came in or you're getting lasered by Caustic and his squad. Still a TBD situation, but all that to say, I'm putting some respect on Caustic's name because he's a meta legend at all levels of play. Ranked just above Caustic in A tier, I have Watson. She's my top ranked controller class legend for the second consecutive season, and I'm still a firm believer in her impact on winning. 
I don't usually make ALGS points because once again, this isn't an apex competitive tier list, but it's worth noting that the team that won land went against the green and ran Watson instead of Caustic in a Bangalore Bloodhound Watson team comp, and it obviously paid dividends. Her gen is one of the most underrated abilities in the game, and coupled with how she can take space for her and her squad indoors or outdoors, I feel there are very few options better at keeping their team healthy and alive than Watson. Unique in terms of playstyle and impact, and similar to Caustic, I also believe she's equipped to not be so easily countered by alter breaches. This is obviously conjecture, and it remains to be seen, but I imagine breaching a Watson team just to be immobilized by her fences, and having to promptly exit. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with this take, but in my mind Caustic and Watson are the best equipped to withstand breaches, whereas Rampart and especially Catalyst are more easily countered. But yeah, Watson doesn't always get the shine she deserves, or big end of game numbers because of how she has to be played, or certain limitations she does have. She makes an intangible impact that I'm able to appreciate, and once again, it's immature to believe that damage output and total kills are what determines someone's skill or overall performance in a match, because success and impact can't possibly be solely defined by those metrics. Food for thought. To close out A tier in my top ranked recon class legend, I have Bloodhound. They were hit with a few nerfs to start this season. The cooldown on their ultimate, Beast of the Hunt, was increased by 1 minute, so it's now 4 minutes, and Nox while in their ult no longer extend its duration. This is significant and kind of brings Bloodhound down a bit in the landscape of the legend meta, but it's understandable given that digital threats were removed this season. I won't overlook how strong having perfect vision through smoke gas and other visual clutter is when in their ult, but I bet you thought I was crazy when I said that Ballistic's ult is more or less a Bloodhound ult for your entire team, and it's low-key better, with a cooldown that's half as long. Think about it. The increase in Bloodhound's pick rate also serves as a factor in decreasing Bangalore's overall viability, and with more and more teams running Bloodhound, the best counter is for your squad to also run Bloodhound. While I still don't think they are absolutely a must-pick in non-competitive Apex, they are firmly a meta legend at the moment and provide immediate utility to any squad in basically any scenario. So I don't have an A-plus tier this season, but hopefully it's a little more straightforward and easier to understand. Let me know in the comments if you prefer having the A-plus tier, or if you prefer this more universal tier list format. That being said, these are the legends I've ranked in S-tier this season, which I consider to be unequivocally the best legends in the game this season. You know the drill. I'll preface with the order I've ranked them as subjective, and I say that because I believe there's a case that can be made for each of them being the best in the game. First up is Revenant. He's received waves of balancing nerfs since his rework back in Season 18, and this season he received an indirect nerf, where Conduit's Radiant Transfer can no longer be used on Revenant when he's in his ultimate. With this change, the Rev Conduit meta's reign of oppression might finally be over. Bless. Personally, I feel like Revenant's Shadow Shroud is a little overrated at this point, but it does obviously grant you some clear and obvious advantages. He's also a great pick for rank because he has repositioning tools, is great in teamfights, and is built for ratting if the situation calls for it. Still S tier in the current meta. Moving on to the next legend I have ranked in S tier, Mad Maggie. I'm honestly a little shocked she didn't receive any nerfs to her upgrade options this season with how oppressive she has the potential to be. I guess people are still sleeping. Her upgrade tree is arguably the best in the game and I've personally made some plays that are pretty eye-opening. Her endgame value is absolutely insane right now as well, but really she's just super fun to play and really impactful across all elos, which is why she's my top rated assault class legend. I'm really high on her right now, and would recommend her to anyone that's a shotgun enthusiast like myself, or if you're just looking to improve with shotguns in general. Recently I was asked who I thought the best legend for beginners is, and after thinking about it some more, I think I'd have to say Maggie. While she can be a little unforgiving at times, she promotes an aggressive playstyle and makes taking fights fun by causing chaos and effectively navigating that chaos. If you haven't heard this already, taking more fights and learning how to effectively navigate the chaos that ensues are the best ways to improve quickly at this game. And for experienced players, she's definitely a fucking weapon. Up next is Horizon. She didn't receive any changes to start this season, but honestly, I don't know how many more times they can try to nerf her. Like I said last season, her core strengths solidify her as a top tier legend in the game. And in my opinion, her kit is incredibly forgiving with no legend feeling better to play and no legend being better at team fighting than Horizon. But yeah, not sure how many more ways I can reword the same blurb season to season. Nothing's changed. Horizon is a staple meta pick. Repeat after me, just because she's not being used in Pro League doesn't mean she's bad now. Following Horizon in S tier, we have Conduit. Is anyone surprised? I didn't think so. She has a new level 2 upgrade option where she's able to stack 3 batteries per inventory slot. Not gonna lie, that's kinda nutty. While she's definitely not as game breaking as she was in Season 19 following her release, she's still at the top of the meta and my top ranked support class legend. I will say the cooldown on her Q does feel quite long, and the shield regen doesn't come on nearly as quickly, with the regen interruption delay being 2 seconds, so she's more easily countered. She's still a borderline must pick in higher elos if you want to remain competitive. But a big issue I've noticed with her is that you and your squad mates begin to become too reliant on her abilities, which may enable some bad habits or a false sense of confidence. <coughs> Wallace. If you don't understand what I'm getting at, think crutching Bloodhound scans. 
Something else I've noticed is oftentimes I'll get randoms in rank that will run a support class legend, but not commit in fights and just dip. Almost like fainting that they're involved, but really have no intention of fighting and hide behind saying, I'll craft you. How this applies to Conduit is that her role by design is that she pushes the tempo in team fights. She doesn't receive a speed boost running away from her teammates, one might say. Closing out S tier, and my top ranked legend this season is Alter. Not sure if I've ever put a new roster addition immediately at the top of my legend rankings, but I felt like I didn't have a choice. Her kit adds a dimension to the game that we've never seen before, and in my opinion will change the way Apex is played moving forward. Her passive allows her to remotely interact with a death box and claim one item, it's not a shield core. Her tactical creates a portal passageway through a surface, and her ultimate creates a regroup point that all allies can remotely interact with to open a phase tunnel back to that location. Her Q is probably the most interesting aspect of her kit because you can use it to teleport through surfaces in almost any direction, even straight upwards, which breaks a lot of barriers that once existed if that makes sense. However, I will say that I don't think she offers as much as other picks in standard 3v3 team fights, with her tactical ability being her only real tool for outplays. That being said, to anyone that disagrees with this take, keep in mind that the community as a whole hasn't figured out how to maximize Alter's kit yet, so give it time. There's insane potential here. As always, if you made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. At the end of the day, these are just my opinions. And high key, I've noticed that it's often the blind leading the blind in this community. I want to encourage you to form your own opinions and not just copy what your favorite creator or pro does or says. Play who's fun and play who you like because any legend is S tier in the right hands. Let me know in the comments what your favorite map is. And if you don't mind sharing what your apex goals are for this season. Hopefully this tier list helps you and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Take just I'm a bad guy, 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 I'm a bad guy,